Just in. I know, you want to what do you want? Dust? That's a GE piston. That is a stock piston. So, we actually use the stock pistons on our stage one builds. The reason why we use the stock piston on our stage one builds is because they've got an oil cooling ring inside the piston itself. Cooling ring inside the piston, um, when the piston goes down in the bore, there's an oil jet at the bottom of the bore. It squirts oil into that ring and it cools the uh, top of the piston down. We run stock pistons on our builds up to 850 horsepower with upgraded connecting rods. These are our connecting rods. I think it's very well known that the weak point of the Daza and the DMWA engine is the connecting rod itself. We use X-beam rods with X-beam rods that have been rifle drilled so you get extra lubrication on the wrist pin and these again support up to 1000 newton meters so these along with stock pistons they're good for 850 horsepower 1000 newton meters if we tune the car if it's got our software on it we'll provide a three year 40,000 mile warranty on that setup we do one a week every week I think we have been doing for the past maybe year and a half, maybe two years. Year and a half, two years. Um, uh, it's our drive-in, drive-out package. Something that we can come around in seven days. Then from there, we've got our stage two build. Um, on our stage two builds, we upgrade the pistons. So this is a JE piston. It can take a bunch more torque. So this, we would probably rate it up to 1200 Newton meters along with our upgraded rods. One more thing if you look here, if we're comparing, the stock piston has got a taper inside it. If you look there, it's tapered. And then if you look at the JE piston, there's no taper, it's just straight. So there's different connecting rods on the JE pistons and the stock pistons. So for example, if you look on this rod, there's a taper there and there's no taper inside that piston, so this would be the incorrect rod for that piston. However, uh, on the stock piston, because you've got a taper there, and there's a taper on the rod, it's the correct connect, uh, connecting rod for that piston. So yeah, different rods for different pistons. So this is a forged rod. Not only is it completely different in design, the material is completely different as well. So this is an X-beam design. and the metal has been forged and strengthened. Uh, they get heat treated, they go through several treatments to be much stronger than cast metal. Steven's talking down the head here. We use stock head studs, again, 850 horsepower, 1000 newton meters. Stock head studs will do that, no problem. We've been testing these for the past two and a half, three years. We're that confident in our builds and our setups that we provide three year 40,000 mile warranties on them so you can be rest assured that they've been tested to death. There's a lot of engine parts out there that people tend to upgrade for particularly no reason at all. Um, but the stock head studs do the job. Uh, we've had engines running 900 horsepower, 950 horsepower on the standard head studs. They're pretty damn strong. All right guys, me and Steven are going to time this engine up. Um, it's a relatively straightforward engine to time. That's the timing mark on the main crank seal. We've got the crank blocking pin here, which puts cylinder five at top dead center. Over on this side, 
you've got the camshafts and there's two timing marks here. So this timing bridge in the middle locks the two camshafts into place. After you've locked the two camshafts in place, the, these are the, the camshaft razors. They need to line up within these windows here. So that mark there needs to line in within this hole or this area. And there's another mark on this side that needs to line up with the whole, uh, area here. When you're uh, torquing the cam phasers down, you need to apply a force of 25 newton meters on the opposing cam phaser so that it's got some tension whilst you're torquing the other cam phaser down. So I'm going to apply 25 newton meters on this cam phaser. And Stephen's going to talk the other side down to 60 newton meters. Once the initial uh, 60 newton meters are done on both the cam phaser bolts, along with 25 newton meters of tension on both of the cam phasers themselves, we then torque them down to 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So another 90 degrees on both of the bolts. After that, we release the tensioner pin. We're going to remove the bridge up the top. We're going to remove the crank pin on the side, and we rotate the crankshaft twice to check if after two rotations everything still lines up. So then you check your timing marks, which are your two timing marks here, your crank pin at the side, and your timing mark on the rear main, the, the front main seal. If you're a technician and you've used this tool before, you're gonna know how annoying it is. So Stephen's removing the timing bridge, we've already removed the crank pin and I'm going to rotate the crankshaft twice in a clockwise direction and we're going to check the timing marks once again. That confirms that we've timed everything correctly. I'm verifying that the timing is correct, so after it spins twice, it obviously loses retention in the timing chain and whatnot. So if there was any tension or there was any incorrect tension in the timing chain, that will all be as it should be. And this allows us to verify the timing to make sure the engine's been timed correctly. So what we're doing is two rotations of the fan shaft. One. And on the second rotation, you're looking to line everything up with the timing marks. So all that lines up over there. Have you got a crank in? Yeah. Yeah. So then we put the crank in. Crank in. Uh, then we've got the timing bridge up top. You put the timing bridge on the cams and hand tighten both of the bolts. If there's resistance, then you're gonna to need to tighten it again because something's not right. And you've got the timing marks on the cam phasers. So if you were to take a screwdriver, put it there, that lines up with that. And on the other side, if you take a screwdriver, put it there, that lines up with the mark there. The cam phasers need to be within this area. All stock engines have got a, a mark from the factory on the rocker cover, which is where they've been timed and marked from the factory.
many hours later. What did you forget to do this thing? So if you forget to put the crank sensor in, that's what happens. The car just coughs at you. That's a rookie error. Shall I just wait till Monday meet a hand with the roof? Switched off, no backup, 